Hello, welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend. at work. Again, this is kind of that weird time of year where both of us are working in our respective cities, so hopefully we'll see her soon. I miss her. Although I do have a weekend off coming up. Good news, bad news, folks. I probably won't be doing the... Super Showdown, because that's October 6th. That's my my day off. I want to take my, my sweetie fishing. I want to get her on a boat 50 miles offshore and watch her freak out. <laughs> she wakes up from a nap. Where is the land at? There is no land. <laughs> 50 miles from the middle of nowhere. She's probably 100 miles from the middle of nowhere. That's a very odd Florida reference. Let's talk about some wrestling. So again, very quick program notes. I would like to thank Nostrum. Yes, I know the videos I made were not of the best quality. Um, it was a Civic Center. The acoustics were kind of okay. And I was playing the game with security because security seemed to be looking after people's cell phones. Especially because Matt Riddle showed up. Whenever there's a debut, security gets extra tough. So, again, I had a bad experience with them at Daytona Beach, and I said, he, 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 he. I'm going to be a sneakier hobo. And, again, I posted all that in a previous video. And, Nostrum, thank you very much for all your comments. Um, hopefully, in the future, I do have some better quality videos, especially if I, ever, after, if I ever go back to Sanford. I do want to take my girlfriend there. It's an amazingly beautiful area. The Civic Center, I want to say, again, it's about one or three blocks from Lake Monroe, and they have a beautiful lake walk. And all like, the really nice dining experiences also seem to be right there along the lake. So that would be kind of a fun date night thing. So we'll think about that. But it's not about date night. It's about Raw. And Raw starts off with a Shield promo. This is pretty good. Your standard Shield promo. Um, the keep the whole thing this episode. Dolph, Drew, and Braun trying to turn Dean against the Shield. And this is smart because he's the only one without a belt. And he is the lunatic fringe. Not all those screws are tied up there. If anyone's going to turn the shield, it's going to be him. So that should be really good. Um, Barrett, of course, Roman just says, you know what, let's sell this here now. Let's fight. Baron says, no, 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 no. Of course, the crowd goes, yes, 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 yes. But Oh, also, happy birthday. Whatever birthday it is, whenever I see signs in the audience, I always like to wish them whatever their sign says, assuming it's decent. So again, happy birthday. This led then to our first match of Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal. And Alicia Fox and Jinder, I guess, in their mixed match, mixed match tag team. And again, I will try to do a react show tomorrow, a live stream react, tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Off, oh, I don't have to work. But I do have to go to bed after that. Oh, shoot. 2 5 in the morning. I've been up since 9 a.m. Again, you had Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal. Alicia Fox was in Jinder's corner along with Sunil Singh. And Bailey was in Finn's corner. Oh, that harkens back to the days of NXT. I think Finn Balor was injured. So Bailey did his entrance. There's a whole YouTube video about that. I don't know who made it. Again, this is... And for some reason, my notes are really repeating themselves. Every... Yeah, it's like, why does it seem like I, I've taken these notes like this before? And again, because of that, 
And it's really again, you have Jinder Mahal being the big, stronger guy who tries, who does try to impose his will, and and he does that pretty well throughout the match. Versus the smaller, more agile, more nimble Finn Balor, again, who tries to quicken the pace. Again, that's probably a very common wrestling thread in a lot of matches. New Japan does tend to vary it up a lot more, though. Everyone in Ring of Honor is polish. And Lucha Underground, they're just all nuts. So, again, just watch my Lucha Underground. Um, I have to talk with my girlfriend about doing an extended show. Hey, Oh. Four shows a week. Well, mon well, yeah, Monday, Monday ish, Tuesday ish, Friday ish, Saturday. Oh wow, this is beginning to feel like work almost. Like I need to get monetized if it's going to be like work. And you people view and like my content, subscribe. Leave a comment, say this is good, or you can always say this is bad. You don't deserve to be on YouTube. You're breaking YouTube, you hobo. Again, this is actually a really, back to the wrestling, this is actually a really fun match. And you have some interference from Bailey again, Bailey wearing the Balor Club gear. And it was really good. Alicia Fox, of course, is going to get involved. And then Sneel Singh eats a Bailey to belly really odd though on his elbow. I mean, I think I actually did legitimately hurt his elbow because a Bailey to belly is supposed to hurt your back. Like when he started to grab his arm and elbow and just to watch the way he kind of fell, you knew Bailey didn't get it, get it all the way. And I still have no idea why the Bailey to belly suplex is a finisher when a lot of Every wrestler uses the, the belly to belly and do the more impressive overhead, overhead or German belly to belly. Yeah, but no, I think it's the overhead belly to belly. Ger you have the German suplex. It's a little bit different from the belly to back minor quibble. Again, feel free to give me your opinion about that stuff. The suple. Still, the fisherman suplex. Still the best. So, um, because of this, again, the outside stuff, Bailey, Sunil, and Alicia Fox. It... Oh, wow, I just forgot. forgot that word. Distracts. That's what I'm looking for. Ginger enough where... Finn Balor gets the roll up. Finn Balor wins. This was, I mean, again, it was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. It was good. You had a T again, kind of a tease and a lead in to the mix match challenge tomorrow. It was fun. Um, then you have the Riot Squad and a six-woman tag match against Natalia and the Bella Twins. It's the Bella Twins. I, I don't know. I've never been a big fan of the Bella Twins. People can say what they want. I don't know. For whatever reason, they turned me off with their antics. And again, the Bellas are still blah. Thankfully, Bree stopped doing suicide dives. Because that, that once, she was like, I know you're supposed to go like this. She went like that. Even though I know better. Try and let the guy somewhat catch you. Say, watch out it was really good. I mean, the thing about this match is that Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan, they're getting so much better. I don't know if it's the reps or if it's being with a real ring vet like Ruby Riot. 
Ruby Riot letting her hair grow out. She doesn't look as Heidi Lovelace-ish anymore. Heidi Lovelace used to have short hair. Now she's... I know I kind of turned to the point because I remember her as... I think I went up to her and said, oh, I remember you as Heidi Lovelace. Oh, that's a distant cousin. So she's trying to remove herself, I guess, from the Heidi Lovelace thing. That's still pretty cool. Ken. Princess Kimberly will always be my princess. Still upset that WWE didn't use her right. Here we go in NXT Purgatorio. But I mean, this was a real, again, this was another fun cheeseburger match. I mean, right? Has her ring generalship. She got her the blind tag in. Natalia wasn't paying attention. The bells were outside the ring. Everyone else was. Uh, Liv Morgan was incapacitated outside the ring. Uh, Sarah Logan was going to eat the sharpshooter sh sharp shooter from Natalia. Natalia did not see the blind tag though. Ruby Riot gave her the right kick. He's a better finisher. The Riot Buster. Hey, that's all you need. The Brain Buster. But the one thing I will say, and probably the reason why I gave this, was the cheeseburger rating. At least it wasn't lol, Nikki wins. And Brie Bella had some funky pants on. Like the lace went down pretty far in the back. We almost had a Bree Moon Fever. My puns. It's again that it was it was good. I mean this whole three hour show was kind of pretty good actually. And then you have uh, Steph and Triple H. They have a nice con uh, Connor secure moment. Then this goes on to Gable and Connor, or versus Connor. And this was kind of like the down match of the night. Because it seemed to be like a semi squash match. I mean, Gable was hitting some moves, but Connor just seemed way much more stronger and more powerful than Victor was. Um, it was a ham sandwich match. Again, Bobby Roode just is kind of on the outside. He's showing a little frustration, though, with Gable, which could lead to a Bobby Roode heel turn. Heel Bobby Roode. When he, especially if he'd stopped wearing the robes to ringside, at least when he wasn't wrestling, and, and wear the suit. And just be the arrogant heel again, the, the cold, calculating arrogance that Bobby Roode could be. So good. Hopefully, this leads to something. Then, actually, in a really fun match, you had Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre versus a revival. And this is just a really fun match. Um,. I'm probably going to downgrade it a little bit because there was some really botchy stuff going on. You no, know, I mean Dolph is is a great. He's a he's a good tag. He's a good he's a good wrestler. When he's in a tag team, he just seems that much better because he shows his kind of ring generalship, his experience. He knows to stay in his corner. It's like okay, I I just got just got beat on. I'm just gonna. So let's sneak on over here to Drew. Of course, the other guy's like, wait a second. We don't want Drew in necessarily. I want to give myself some space just in case Drew McIntyre does get in. Again, it's a whole ring generalship, the whole ring awareness, um, the tag team intuition. I mean, Dolph has that. I'll give him that much. I mean, just smart. Um, Drew again is there for the hot tag. 
I mean, there was some weird botch. I think the revive, I think the spot was that it was going to go from a famous urn to a uh, electric chair position. But I, I know the revival is on the shorter side. Dolph is fairly l lanky, I mean, muscular, but 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 long leg, long limb. Um, again, it's like when who did I? See? It was a uh, Matt Riddle on oh, the past match versus Fabian Eichner. Where Matt Riddle's used to, to some degree, there's always going to be that the exception of Matt Riddle versus Keith Lee, but that was a tag team match, so I kind of tossed toss that out a little bit. Where Matt Riddle's used to going against a lot lighter, smaller, more agile opponents, a little bit, I say, like less heavy. Then he's 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 Matt Riddle's used to going against cruiserweights for the most part. Again, with exception in, in, in the Indies. But he never had Keith Lee up for, for, for a bro to sleep. Again, they just seem to have that prominent. I'm sure they're very muscular. I'm sure, I'm sure they're probably intent, very strong. It's just a matter of just being used to it. I mean, if you're used to facing similar-sized people, I mean, you're not going to be used to someone longer and lankier. Lanky is probably probably the wrong word I'm looking for, but I hope you folks out there in the YouTubeville went YouTubeville know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it, it was it was fun. Though. I mean, the revival was a very classic tag team. Dolphin drew one. It was a really fun match. I mean, it was a cheeseburger quality match. Again, the revival, they pulled out all the tag team tricks. Uh, Dolphin Drew finished with the zigzag and Claymore. Not a bad way to go, I guess. And this led to another really fun match of Bobby Lashley versus Elias. And in, in uh, Elias's corner, you have Kevin Owens. In Lashley's corner, you have Leo Rush. Again, in their respective corners. The fun thing about this is that you have two people with, for the most part, the same style. You have you have the bigger, stronger guy versus a big, strong versus the even bigger, stronger guy. So again, Bobby Lashley showing his power just shows his really brute strength. However, Elias is a smart person. He's a smart wrestler. He knows to go after the legs of Lashley. And somewhere in the match, Lashley like busted his lip. Because you can see, like, it was a little bloody. I mean, you're not going to really cut your lip open. You're not going to juice your lip. Because you're really not going to see that. But it looks like it's just like, I think it hit. I want to say the ring apron funny. But like it bounced against, or like, it, but, but, like a, it was a spot against the ropes. Hey, things happen in the ring. I'm sure Elias didn't. Mean it, but it happens. Actually, adds to meet you and we're like, Whoa, Lash has a busted lip. Uh oh. And and then Kevin Owens, of course, interferes because everyone winds up on the outside. Uh, Kevin Owens, Lashley, it's a death finish, baby. But here in the WWE. Thus, the finish means there's a winner. And Bobby Lashley is a winner by a dusty finish, by DQ. And we found out that Bobby Lashley's partner is Mickey James, so you have the Mickey Bobby connection. That's right, just, just like Ricky Bobby, the Taldega Knights. Again, that, that should be fun. Beautiful license. I don't know. That's too long of a pause, though. Again, Leo Rush, again, eventually Elias and Kevin Owens try to corner Leo Rush. Leo Rush is a little too quick, a little too agile, a little too smart, a little too nimble. 
Uh, Kevin Owens did get him up in a power bomb, but of course Bobby Lashley came in, caught him, and Kevin Owens quickly left the ring. So again, it was it was a fun match. Then you had Alicia Fox versus Nia Jax, and this match was okay. Uh, you had you had um, Ember Moon and Nia Jax's corner, and Alicia Fox. His corner, you had Alexa Bliss. You know, Alexa Bliss is injured because she's not in the mixed match challenge. Neither is Sasha Banks. So again, the thing with this, again, you have kind of a clash of different styles, which is good. I mean, you have Alicia Fox, not necessarily faster, but she has a longer reach, especially with those kicks. I mean, she has really, I never realized how long her legs were. Very skinny looking legs, but very long legs. What's Nine Jax? She, she, what's the nice way to say? She's more compact. Bigger, stronger, more compact, more muscular. So, again, for the most part, Fox did a pretty good job of keeping Nine, Nine, Nine Jax at bay. And that's the reason why I gave it a ham sandwich rating. So again, after a while, once Nia could actually close the distance or actually close the distance because Alicia Fox went off the ropes and then tried to do something, Nia Fox caught her in the Simone drop. Once once nine jacks get too close, that's that's it. Game over. And then Emma Moon goes in to congratulate them. Congratulate them. Then we have the main event of the evening. We have the Shield, composed of Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose, versus Baron Corbin, the Authors of Pain. And to set this up before this match. Uh, there was Drew and Dean in like the athletic room or the trainer's room. And Drew's planting those seeds for Dean's heel turn. We'll see. Again, this was a really fun match. I mean, Renee. <laughs> Renee has to be a little, a little bit more objective. Touting her husband really talks up Dean so much. Hey, she's playing the good wife. WD, WWE won't admit it publicly, but you, you can tell in her voice. It's really good to see the authors of pain in the main event versus Jobbers, versus Jobber McJobbers. So, I mean, that's good. And they looked really strong. Um, oh, what's his face? What's there, too? But Rockstar Spud. He's a kid dressed up for a Halloween costume. And it was really fun. It really, I think it really showcased the authors of pain more than anyone else. I mean, they were cleaning house for a while. Acom uh, comes in. I know one of them is from the Middle East. And then the others, I think, Resorts from the Netherlands. Acom, I want to say, it's from like Pakistan or Kazakhstan. It's like the Middle East, but not the extreme south, like what used to be part of the old Soviet old Soviet Union. Shows my age. Yeah, and again, this was a really fun match. I mean, the Shield got all their spots in. Authors of Pain were, were doing the last chapter on everyone. You have Rockstar Spud. <laughs> Just forget his name. Just shouting commands at him. Like, he has the algorithm. And for a while, it was actually Dean versus three others. And then every so often, Drew, um, Braun, Dolph, and Drew were sitting in, in chairs. They began to creep up to the ringside. And then, and then finally, the authors of pain again—they just look good. 
I mean, Corbin is the one that eats the pen. So I can understand that. I think one of the officers of pain eat a dirty deeds, but they don't get pinned. And then Baron Corbin tries to do the deep six to Dean. Roman blind tags Dean. Dean ducks or something. And then Roman gets the spear and, and lol, Roman wins. But it was fun though. It really protected the officers of pain. It really showcased them too. And then the final thing. What will Dean do? Will he go back to the field or join and be part of the Hounds of Justice or be part of the Dogs of War? Well, before I get to that, this was actually a surf and turf quality match. It was fun. It was good. It had a good showcase for everyone. But then with that being said, Dean does go back very reluctantly to the Shield. But we'll see what happens in the future. If they do this on a really good slow burn, it should be really good. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, thank you, Nushroom, for all your comments. You have this little, little picture I got from NXT as a thank you, sir. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, I'll post this video as soon as I can. And also, I look forward to my Tuesday video for SmackDown. And I live stream tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Hopefully, I have less technical issues than I did last time for the Mix Max Challenge. Good night, everyone.